And last but not least, uh, let's talk about Momali One Love. Um, this is probably going to be one of the most discussed films, hopefully, um, for the next you know few weeks or so. Um, Ricardo, you didn't get a chance to see it because you were busy. No, That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, but I saw it yesterday, so I'm just going off of what I just saw, right? So, Bob Marley, you know, the man, the myth, the legend, um, words can't even begin to describe how influential he is as an artist, right? And as a Caribbean artist as well, too, right? Um, you know, his music has impacted the world, right? Full stop. That's it, right? Uh, but I can't genuinely say that I am knowledgeable in all things Bob Marley, right? I just know the albums. I've, I've heard them years ago, so I'm not, like, familiar with them, you know, in terms of, like, track like track run and all that kind of stuff like you know like from beginning to end i can't tell you oh well, this is track one or this is track and whatever i can't tell you that right but i know the hits um you know we you know we spoke about it before with um with the first trailer with our reaction to it yeah we grew up on legend um still to me that is the best compilation album i say ever made in my opinion right because yeah all the songs were, were bangers in my opinion right but as far as who he was and you know like this is life the um I know little about his life, right? Which sucks, right? But I mean, it's not like I had to learn about his life and career in school or whatnot, right? It's just something I never really bothered to seek out, right? But in preparation for this, I found a book. Let me just pull up the name here quickly. Yeah, it's a book from um, Roger Stephens by the name of So Many Things to Say, right? Um, Roger, from what I... Well, what I remember here right now um, actually documented uh, the rise, you know, just basically the career of Mali throughout his life, right? And has continued to compile a lot of like information and music and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, he knows a lot when it comes to him, right? And yeah, he put out, he put out a book um, way back in like the late 2010s. I actually like got the audiobook for it, so I was listening to it uh, in preparation for this, right? And okay. What that book does so well is that it's not like, giving you, you know, this play-by-play rundown of his life and career, right? It it's it zeroes in on certain moments, like certain moments in the career of Bob Marley and the Wheelers, right? And it involves interviews. So, like, interviews that he did over the past dec- few decades, right? And they will address certain topics and they will say, okay, yes, this happened this way, or somebody else will come and say, no, that didn't happen that way, right? So it's relying on the interviews to carry the stories along, right? So they are telling the stories, right? And why why I chose this book out of the other books that I could have chosen, right, about uh, Bob Marley, is that when it comes to his life, right, you know, um, you know, there'll be all this, there'll be like basic knowledge that, you know, people will, everywhere will say is true, right? But then there'll be other people who come and say, Actually, no, that didn't play out like that. You know, you know, this happened in this concert or this happened here, all that kind of stuff, right? And that right. really adds to the complexity of Bob Marley, right? Because, yes, we know about the music. We know the songs. We know the hooks. We know the lyrics, right? But when it comes to the man himself, right, I know that there's a lot about him that we don't know. And, yeah, I, I see myself, you know, seeking out more information about his life because, yeah, um, it's a really fascinating life that this man lived, right? And, you know, well, all the goods and, you know, the good, the bad, the ups and downs, all that kind of stuff, right? And I like that, you know, nobody will say that, you know, he was this righteous, pure, you know, upstanding citizen. You know, there there was some, you know, the man of flaws, right? You know, he's a human being at the end of the day, right? Um, but it's about the messages that he that he delivered through his music, right? And how timeless they are and how it, you know, spread through the, how those songs, you know, impact the world. That's really what matters, right? So when you hear... Bob Marley won love, right? When you hear, oh, you know, Hollywood finally going to pull the trigger and do a musical biopic about this man, right? After, like, umpteen years since, you know, he passed away, right? Yeah, you, you, of, of course, the expectation is going to be really high for this one, right? Even if you're like, I don't know, I know. But still, deep down inside, you want to see it, right? Because of how big of a deal Ma- Marley is, right? You know, we saw the trailer and we reacted to it, um, you know, and... You know, one of the big concerns we had was, oh, the casting of Kingsley Benadier right. and Shana Lynch to play Bob and Rita Marley, right? Two British actors playing that, right? But I said, you know what? When the movie comes out, we'll see, right? But I know a lot of people go in and say, boy, why they couldn't cast some Jamaican people to do this, boy? Right. You know what I mean? They could have cast one of the Marley's. That's, that's one of the big comments, cast one of the Marley's. Like, cast one of the Marley's. Uh, but to be fair, to be fair, 
um, if I'm not mistaken, Ziggy and, St- and, and Stephen work behind the scenes, right? They they really helped in the production of this film. So that's great, right? And they also are characters. So they actually played as little kids in the show here, right? So what it's about? Um, it is set in 1976, right? So this is already the same time when they was having this political conflict in Jamaica uh, at that time, right? So it was the GLP versus the PNP, right? And because they had, you know... Um, uh, gang ties, right? Well, both groups had gang ties. Yeah, there was it was like a literal civil war, right? It was literal like gunfire and all that kind of stuff, right? So, Bum himself, right, wants to perform this concert to promote peace, right? But while he's preparing for the concert, um, you know, these two gunmen roll hit, um, run into his estate and yeah, just start a shoot out the place. Uh, Rita is hit, um, and Bob is hit as well too. But thankfully, Bob survives. But uh, Rita survives as well too. But she is ho- hospitalized, right? So because of all that, Bob is like, you know what? I I need to get away from all this heat. I need to, right. you know, clear my mind, right? I need to I need to refocus now, right? So he and the family, they and, and his band, they go over to London and they they start work on a new album called Exodus, right? Um, they want to bring a new sound, a new style, and whatnot. But they want they want the messages to ring true, right? And they actually do the album, and it's a it's a commercial success, right? And they take yeah, it across, right? Um, they take it across Europe and they do the tours and all that kind of stuff. And then he returns, and you know you see what happens there, right? But in between all that kind of stuff, uh, it also explores like uh, his come up into the music world um, and the relationship, relationship sorry, between him and um, Rita as well is explored as well. And yeah, it's just basically just seeing the man behind the myth, right? And that's what it is, right? So, get any good out of the way. Get any surprising out of the way. Have no fear, folks. Kingsley Benadire did his job. He did his damn no, job nice. on, this, on this movie. He should, nice. He do your assignment. The task is play Bob Marley, and he did it. There were moments, swear to God, where Kingsley was lost in that role. I did not see Kingsley. I did not see that guy from from Secret Invasion. But then again, I right. forgot half of Secret Invasion. Anyway, so yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You can see uh, Bobby here. You remember from Bobby? I, I didn't even see you know dude from from Bobby. I didn't see him. Right. I saw Bob Marley. Right. To be fair, it is Kingsley playing Bob Marley, right? But he plays it, he plays him, sorry, so well, right? I'm not going to say it's an Oscar-worthy performance, though, but it is up there, though. It is shockingly, shockingly good, right? Um, Lashana Lynch is is equally great as well as, as Rita, right? Um, she she kneels the performance well though. Some will say that yeah, she she kind of outshine Kingsley, and I have to agree with you know those 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 um opinions because yeah right. um yeah there are moments where yeah she kind of show like yeah in this game look I assume that she like act longer than than him you know acting wise I don't know but yeah she kind of show she acting range in this one she was great she even had moments to sing as well right. Speaking of singing um and this was a concern of mine as far as you know when um. Kingsley had to sing. There are moments where Kingsley does sing, and I thought that he 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 does a solid job, right? Kneeling the the vocal inflections that 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 Bob had, he kneels it, right? I swear that there are moments where they segue from the from the recording into Kingsley's voice. I I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they do, right? Because they will have the song playing um uh, non di- um, non non diegetically, right, in the background, right? I'm oh, sorry, diegetically, sorry, in the background, right? And then it will segue into his voice performing it, right? I thought that they did that very well. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they do that, but I, I, I am going off the impression that the, you know, when, when it's time for King Z to sing, it's him. And when you, when, when you hear the songs in the background, that's Bob, right? So they do that very well, right? And the choice of songs fit the uh fit the, the the scenes very well right you know um it's a greatest hits yes you know it's not legend but you know it's a greatest hits right what i wish we could have gotten though was more songs from exodus but they decided what we're gonna do the greatest hits thing so like all right all right all they're doing the, the greatest hits that's fine you know we love these songs right um and again where the frame in the film it works right uh, I thought that the direction was 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 handled very well. I thought it was decent, right? It's actually from um, the direction is well, the director sorry is Ronaldo uh, Marcus Green. Uh, last film he did was uh, King Richard, right? You know, which starred you know keep my wife's name out here, effing Will. Okay. Yeah, it's it's uh-huh. him. He, he do that, right? Right. And uh, I, I thought that directing 
yes, it was solid, right? Like in terms of just the way how Jamaica is portrayed, how it looks. Yeah, it looks very sumptuous, you know, very, very well um, filmed. And yeah, even the color correction would perfect. Would be brilliant. Right. Just... So I know um, the last person who, who do something in Jamaica was, um, I call him, H.G. Selva. had a little film I remember he did. Oh, um, Yadi, yeah. yes, which I... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed that, okay. but but even yeah, that, even competent. that was was it was paired with scenes in in um in England. I remember that, right? You're right. And, and even yeah. with this film here, you see scenes in well, well, um, they, they go to London, they go to Paris. So You're right. You see, you see a different you know perspective, right? Um, also the music was done. Well, the the background score was done by Chris Bowers. I was like, hey, Chris Bowers, I right, would you know King Richard again, color purple, all right, all right, cool. And I thought that he did a great job with the the background score and whatnot, right? Um, and lastly, um, there are some great visuals in this, right? There's this one, it's it's symbolic um, and metaphorical too, but I, I love it, right? Which you see it in the trailer. I wasn't sure what it was about, but it's such a, it was such a striking scene, right? It involves this kid, well, it's Bob as a kid, running into the middle of this um, this this field. And it's basically like this circle of fire, and he's in the middle, and then you see this guy on horseback, right? At first, you're not sure of what they try to say with it, um, they give a hint of what it could be about, right? But when the payoff at the very end, though, I was like, all right, I love this. This is this is genuinely heartfelt. I love that, right? And um, I should mention, too, just, just quick positives, right? Also, um, the representations of Rastafari uh, uh, Rastafari culture. I, I really dug that, right? I make a joke right. about it. I would say, there better be weed in this movie. And yes, there's weed in this film, but, you know, it's, it's mostly spliff stuff, right? Spliffs, right? right? Which is fine. It's like, ah, no problem with that. But, yeah, um, a majority of times when you do see Bob and when you do see Rastas, yeah, they are smoking that weed. And I was like, all right, I could, I could live with this. I could live with this. This is fine. I love this, right? Um, and last... Uh, praise I'll give this to is the dialogue. I love that it is very authentic to the Jamaican uh, vernacular, right? You know, the, the patois and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, right. I would so love to, to, to see this digitally or see come out on home media and see the, the, the subtitles for this, you know what I mean? Right. You can't pull that bullshit of saying, oh, speaking in patois, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. When they say yeah. fee, when they say kaya, when they say all those words, they have to print that. Or they have to show that big and bold. And I'm a subtitles guy, yeah? so I will be keeping my eye out. I will make sure that the, those <laughs> subtitles are authentic to what these characters are saying, right? But it's not done in such a way, the dialogue is done, it's not done in such a way that people who are not versed in Jamaican patwa won't understand what's going on. They will get the gist of what's being said, right? But in terms of just the, the, the um yeah, just the dialogue, it works. Even right down to Kingsley, I thought that he, the man nearly the Jamaican accent he nailed it Lashana nailed it they, they were great right so that's that so that's as far as it goes with positives right right oh and I should mention one more positive right one more positive right I actually do like where the film is set up where it's framed right I like the right. decision that okay we're not gonna cover every aspect of Marley's life we you know we yeah. can do the typical biopic thing and start from the very beginning but no we're starting at a crucial moment in his career, and right. we see how his character grows there. But we're also gonna tie back to the to his come up and his beginnings and all that kind of stuff. Right, I you like know, then uh, is he guinea like, guinea pepper? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that's a very smart call. I know a lot of people will go in expecting it to start from the very beginning. They, they can no, I don't expect that. that, that like, uh, where, but I thought, I thought the typical, I thought the typical thing is huh. no. I, I thought, I thought the typical thing they would do is like, oh well, you 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 do the t- the poor mother day where you flash back to the childhood thing, maybe sometimes. But you know, well, for I understand it did like a kind of political dimension to it, that yeah. that you know hot heat hot time in his life kind of aspect. Like, okay, okay. E- exactly right. But yeah, but but touching on flashbacks now and now now to get to the to the not so good right to the negatives that I have with this because yes, I have some negatives. Um, boy, uh, so, so the description I gave this, right, so the, the little post I did on Facebook is that, um, this, this feels more like a sampler than an album, right? Now, what I mean with that right. is that samplers, like album samplers, right? So, basically, to promote the, the album, they will give it, like, about five songs or whatnot, right? And the dope songs, right? The dope songs, right? But it's supposed to be, you know, a, a teaser, like a teaser for what to expect, right? And while I'm watching this, right, while I am impressed by what it is they do it, right, um, visually, directing-wise, even writing-wise, no, too, 
ah, there's so much they could have done more with this thread. So right. the moment going into this, right, prior to me going into this, the moment I saw the runtime for this was 104 minutes, I was like, yeah, red flag, right. red flag right there. This yeah, too short. Yeah. Too short, boy. Um, yeah, wow. There was so much that they could, add, they, they, they should have added to it, right? Even with the framing of it being at, a, at the latter you know, half of his career. They could have still had so much moments. And I'll explain what I mean, right? So, there are flashbacks to this movie, right? There are flashbacks using this film. There are flashbacks um, to his come up, right? To his childhood and whatnot, right? Um, and there's going to be some minor spoilers in this section, folks. So, forgive me if you don't want to hear spoilers. Well, I guess, you know, scroll to the end or whatever, right? Because this is the final review. I don't care, right? So... There are moments, right? So this is me going off of what I read from the book so far. I haven't even read the whole thing, right? So the book kind of mentions like the the business aspect of where, like when they were coming up as the wheelers, right? The music side of things, right? They know it's the business side. They know it's not just making songs, but they had to sell records, right? Not just in Jamaica, but abroad, right? And there's a moment where they were talking about Exodus, right? Like the album and how they're going to release it too. And they cut back now. Like they just decide out of the blue to cut back to... Uh, a moment in 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 uh, Mali's early life where he w- well where they they actually perform one of their greatest songs as the Wheelers, Simmer Down, right? And he mentioned that in the book as well too, right? But it felt like it just kind of came out of nowhere, right? Where they didn't right. mention that, right? But that in itself could have been a great moment to talk about the the money side of things, uh, because yeah, uh, what I learned from the book that it wasn't easy. With the, that, their their career um, trajectory wasn't wasn't easy at all, right? Um, there was like a lot of chicanery going on with with, with uh, producers and labels and all that kind of stuff there. So I felt like that could have been the perfect moment to explore that, man. Then you could compare. You're right. Oh, I don't understand why the album yeah. Um, like where's called by the in Jamaica? It have with the twenty seven families. I forget where it's called. But it's about a bunch of a, a small handful of families who like have own everything and they're really connected to music. And it's a whole thing. Right, right, right. Uh, I think one yeah. of them, um, oh gosh, is this um, Chinese family? Uh, I know they own a, a, a um, oh gosh, um, Kong, I think it is. I, I can't remember right. the surname, but I know one of them, like, have a big label and, you know, was putting out records and all that kind of stuff, right? But yeah, point is, right, like, if you want to bring in the, the, the flashbacks or whatnot, right, let's say it's spent too much time on them, but really go, out, really, like, compare the two, like, co- compare them a lot stronger. I felt that's, that's what the film could have done, right? And throughout this film, right, they are t- they, they try to, to touch on certain things. They try to hint at certain things, but they just do it in glimpses. Even right down to that simmer down sequence, which is great. But that even felt yeah. like, all right, but they could expand this more, right? Um, and the flashbacks, I understand why they're there. They kind of have to fill up the story a little bit more because it can't just be about Mali in, in Europe doing this thing, right? They had to show stuff about each other and kind of stuff, right? But even there, there's moments that, that are, are blatantly left out, right? And you just, they're like, but this, like, and you know it's there. You know it's left out, right? Even if you don't know anything, it still has this disjointed feeling. You still feel like, wow, like, you could expand this more. Or I feel like there's something that, 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 that's missing. And I know a lot of people, especially those who, who don't know anything about Mali's life and career, will feel that same way, right? And it's the way how the film is edited and put together. You could tell that there are stuff that, that is missing, right? Um, there's a moment that feels downright like it, it feels downright choppy right as a montage and boy talk about misleading the audience right so there is a moment, right i'm not gonna spoil what it is but it's one of the big moments in the first trailer that when you see it you're like oh they're gonna touch on this because this is a big moment a big aspect behind the scenes of bob's career right bob's life right and literally it's like the same shot that they show and it runs for the same duration of time wow i just say watch yeah. this like all this serious and here's the here's here's the here's the here's the shit about it right here's the shit about it right the show expects <laughs> you the viewer to know what the scene is about and right. know what the yeah. context is even though i see this thing for like five seconds they expect you to know what this is about I'm like no because you explain nothing to me sure you give me an argument scene that's, that's the last spoiler I'll give about that. They give my argument scene between Bob and Rita and in the process they bring it up but that's not enough. 
And there's a moment yeah. even in that argument where they mention Peter Tosh and, and Bunny Wheeler. Can they look around? Are they where 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 Tosh? Where where Bunny? I've not right. seen them. I've not seen them. But they had already left the band, or or at least they they, they would in the band at that point in time. And they're like, but you could have you could have showed that. You could have showed that. Don't don't just tell me they're there or to, um, t- don't just mention them in speech and then expect everybody to be like, oh, I understand what that means. I know what they talk about. You're right. No, like show it now because it's about it's about the story, right? So I don't know if there's like a director's cut for this. I highly, highly don't. Right. But I can imagine like that, a, right? A director's cut somewhere, right? Now here's here's the really egregious thing about this, right? I would not be surprised if these moments that were cut out have to do with the people who are behind the scenes with us and this. You're right. Well, the usual, yeah, the usual biopic stuff. stuff. Yeah. Exactly. But still, even if you don't want to air out your dirty laundry. Why include it in the trailer for? And it's in a very dramatic moment in the first trailer. Like when you see it there, like, oh, wow, wow, because it built into this great climax now. Yeah. Um, you just see it in the movie, just take five seconds, like, wah, 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 wah. It, it just sort of yeah. and goes, and you're like, all right, well, if you don't want to show it, then why bring it up in the first place, right? And even if you don't want to bring up the dirty laundry, right? You still could have given them more of the the come up story of of how Bob Marley and the Wheelers became to be. And here's the two aspects where they where they really dropped the ball, where they really could expand on. One, um, how their music was able to um, how 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 yeah how their music was able to 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 um, to, to translate to um to to different audiences around the world. How how come these songs right whether it's simmer down. Or I shot the sheriff and whatnot. Why right. are these songs so impactful? Why are these songs so impactful? It's not just the music. It's not just the the vocals or the or the lyrics. It's something else. It's the vibe about it. It's something deeper about it. And I felt like this show could have expanded on that. Right? There, there's one song that they kind of do that, but the whole idea is that oh, he was working on this song all of his life. Like, yeah, it's a dramatic moment, but still, like, that's not enough, though, because it's a powerful song. I'm not going to say what it is, right? It's a powerful song, right? But even still, it's like, all right, but uh, this is where I get, 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 uh, I'm going to get to the second part now. Um, the impact of their music in their home country. Because, yes, while I understand right. the framing of the show with, you know, he did the concert, and then he, he always got assassinated, so he flies out, and then, you know, now he's carried across his music, uh, uh, you know, across Europe. What about Jamaica? Why why do Jamaica why did Jamaica why did Jamaica praise Bob Marley's music? Why did they praise them so much? It had to do with, you know, the context, you know, the well the subtext, sorry, behind the songs, right? And the show could have touched on it. Don't just play the songs, but kinda give us moments where it's like, all right, this is why this song was so important at this right. in Jamaican history. That's why these songs uh, resonate today. That's what you know, like that. The so I'll try an example, like the you know, uh, still to this day, the best example of of how to do a proper music biopic. It's not even perfect. Eh? Straight out of Compton, you understand right. why they do the song. Well, but we, but even Compton. that, you understand even why they do fuck the police. You get the context right. right there, and even when they do the performance, you know the performance scene. You understand why why people was like shook by it, but you understand why NWA and why you know LA was was rocking with them because of that song because they made a statement. The, this show does does nothing. It just trust that you know the song and you like the song and you know the lyrics and they sound good and whatnot. But there's no subtext. You don't understand. Why right. you know like why these songs resonate today? Yeah, this could have been a great opportunity to do that, right? And lastly, lastly, before I get to read it, right? Um, and unfortunately, I have to say this about the man himself, about the central figure himself, Bob Marley. You get glimpses of complexity. You get glimpses of who the man really was and his beliefs and all that kind of stuff. But it feels so surface level. Um, whether it's his, belie- whether it's his uh, Rastafari belief, right? Um, whether it's his, you know, um, view, his will view on, you know, just peace and love and all that kind of stuff, right? Right. Um, it just sort of scratches the surface. You don't really understand. All right. So to be fair, yes, they they do show. His introduction into the um, into the Rastafari right, uh, feat, right? I understand that, that, that was cool, that was nice, right? But him incorporated that into the music, him deciding that okay, I'm not just gonna do cover songs of classics, um, R&B and soul songs from the '60s. That was what the Wheelers were doing. I'm actually gonna incorporate my beliefs into this song, right? And 
I'm going to do it in such a way that it becomes universal. So it's not just about Rastafari, it's about the world. I want the world to understand why we believe what we believe. I'll throw an example. They had a, a like one of the early moments, they have um, Stand Up For Your Rights, right? Classic yeah. song, right? And that also touches into their, their belief, right? Into their religion, right? They could explore like why they would make that song in the first place. No, what they do, they just have them, you know, just have Bob and his his band mem- uh, members just running through trench town in the early morning while the song is playing, and then they they go by this waterfall and they you know they enjoy themselves or whatnot, right? I mean, but like still, they could explain in terms of Jamaican history and and music why that song matters, why people praise that song so much, right? So overall, there's just so much missed opportunities here. And, you know, you could say, well, you know, maybe it had to do with what the Mali family wanted to do. But at the end of the day, what the show could have been, it could have just been not just showing you the man in this position in his life. I mean, that's fine. That's typical biopic shit, right? But really get into the roots of why his music stands out so much. And not just say, well, you're supposed to know that because you heard this song and you heard that song. You're right. You heard this song, in, in, you know, at some point in time in life. No, really go in deep. Um, it could have done it with the political stuff because, yeah, the political stuff kind of came in early and then afterwards just sort of threw it away. You get one news report when he's in London and that's pretty much it. And then, well, they mention of it in the end, but that's it, right? Um, and I'm not even going to spoil how it ends, but the end... Like the end itself, before we get to like the the um the the, the final like the um closing words and all that kind of stuff, it's kind of disappointing, you know, because they all right. they, like it's all building up to this moment, and they say, you know what, we're not even gonna show it. Let's cut the black boom and play a song and tell you what happened, and that's it, the end. And you're supposed to go online and look up a perfor- the performance and see how it plays out. No nah, man, it's a Hollywood film. Right. Show us it, the like. Look, slight spoiler. Friggin' Bohemian Rhapsody showed the Live Aid concert, which the show was leading right. up to. You're telling me, right? I- I'll give it out. I'll give it out. The One Love concert, right? Where the title of this movie came from. You're telling me you couldn't even show me the One Love concert. Like, in right. the film, they just show me excerpts of when the real Mali perform it, man. Like, come on, man. Dread. Really? Right. No, okay. hey, nah, man. You know what I mean? So, the, so overall, the, what, just, just last words uh, before I get to read it. Um, there was so much missed opportunities in terms of showing the man, the myth, the music, and in particular, why he still matters, why he is one of the most iconic musical figures of all time, why Exodus is voted by Time as the greatest album of all time, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. They could have gone so in-depth, right? and, and in particular, and I can imagine a lot of Jamaicans feel the same way, why Jamaicans resonated with his music so much? Why do they still resonate with his music so much? Why? How? 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 How was his music able to inspire them, especially in the setting of this Jamaican civil war? Why does his music continue to drive them to to think positively? They could have expanded on that. No, they just say, you know what? Bob jump on a plane. He do an album. He went to Europe, and yeah, the Europeans get they understand that. That's cool, but what about the Jamaicans, bro? You know what I mean? That's you know it's about them. You know what I mean? No, no fans, right. right? So I could tell the way to cover a lot of ground, but again, I love where it's set, right? But even in the setting, even if you want to say we don't want to show you everything, because then we'll have a four-hour movie. No, they could have still do much more. So in other words, we could have gotten a half hour more of material and they could expand on more of the themes and the, the subject matter and stuff that they were exploring. Even right down to Bob and Rita's relationship, right? Because yeah, they skip a lot of stuff, right? I don't even know every single detail about their relationship, but they, they, they skip out a lot of stuff. And you're telling me an argument scene supposed to sum it up for me? Nah, man. And I'm sorry to say, just lastly, uh, even Lashana Lynch even felt shortchanged though, because yeah, she was barely in the film. When she's there, right. she makes herself stand up, but it's like, not enough though. So she just felt like a background character. And boy, do even talk about the background characters though. Cause yeah, even though I was looking out for Peter Tosh and Bonnie Wheeler, everybody else was there and they do the thing and they stay in the lines or whatnot. But I can I and whew, I feel like I, I feel like I, I, I'm wrapping up here. Like but I feel like I, I like I'm like I'm a broken record here, right? Even they themselves are just background characters. They're just there, they see a line, they do what they have to do, but you don't even know who they are. And again, the biggest, the cardinal sin that this movie does is it assumes that you have to know who these people are. 
you have to right. know the name of this guy. You have to know the the, the, right. the, uh, the, 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 uh, the bass player and the drummer. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. At least you can tell me the names, but no, it trust me, you're supposed to know. I don't know who the manager is. I don't know. Oh, sorry, his manager, uh, this um, this British guy. I don't know. You could at least tell me his name. Don't expect me to wait till the credits to be like, oh, that's his name, and that's the actor. No, man. Tell us the story. Don't assume that we're supposed to know the story and just hear the songs and see Mali on screen and be like, oh, yeah, I like this. Nah, man, give us more, man. So even if you know little or know a lot about Mali, um, it's still not enough, though, and that's unfortunate, right? So, rate wise for me, boy, T set a strong two and a half out of five. See it if you want to. Um, okay. I didn't walk out of this movie, find it to be a total waste. To be fair, right. it was either this or Madam Web, right? Oh, well, yeah, okay. Well, I mean. Or Madam Web. Think about yeah, it. Yeah, well, I mean. this or Madam Web, right? <laughs> so. Well, I heard, I heard, like, they, they, they was, they, this had some legs. I heard that, like, well, anecdotal, one of my friends, he was, I'll uh, say, you know, they dropped this from a certain, from some theaters. This isn't in, like in Ireland or anything. Uh. They dropped this, they dropped Madam Web from theaters and replaced it with this. And this make money. So it's like, yeah, popular, yeah. you know. No, well, well, to okay. be fair, people will go and see this. This, this, this has, uh, 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 this has box office joy, though. People will see right. it, right? If whether it's to see if Kingsley could, could play the role properly or not, which he did, or if it's right. just, oh my God, we're finally getting a Bob Marley biopic, right? And that's that's the vibe that a lot of people will go into this with. We're finally getting a Bob Marley biopic, but between you right. and me. You can really see, you can really tell why it took so long for Hollywood to do this, right? Because there's so much to say, right? There's so much story you could tell, right? And even with the framing of it at this period in his life, they could have done so much more with it, though. It just feels so scant. It doesn't even scratch. It, is, it, it doesn't even go deep into why he is still revered as one of the greatest uh, musicians of all time um, or, or why he is the, the icon when it comes to, to Rastafari or, or marijuana or stuff like that. It doesn't even go that deep, though. And I'm not sure if it's just... They were over like the, the filmmakers were overwhelmed. I don't know, or they, they felt there was just too much subject um, content to work with, or right. if it's just stuff behind the scenes. Now nah, I don't want you to show this. I don't want you to, to air or air out with dirty laundry. Sorry, but again, don't tell me that we're going to see this person and you only see she for five right she right and you only, you only see she for five friggin' seconds, man. Come on, and expect the audience to be like, oh, I know who she is. No, right. don't do us that, man. Come on, right? So I don't know. If, I, I I suspect that there's some director's cut somewhere, boy. Um, right. I don't, for a part of it, just like, I don't think there is. I think that this is the film they want to do. They want to keep it safe and sanitized. And this is it. And they can't expect the audience to go home and, I don't know, buy a book or go on Wikipedia and read up everything else about it. But nah, man, they could have give us, even if that was the intention, they could have still give us more out of the story. Because yeah, ultimately, Bob just comes off as a figurehead, not more, not less. But we wanted to see who he really was, though. But eh, it, it really didn't do it for me, unfortunately. But I, I mean, I admire the effort, though, and I'm glad that this movie exists. And hopefully, people will check it out and make their own opinion on it. And hopefully, you know, for younger viewers, you know, seek out his music and like not just listen to these songs, but the albums, right? Really listen to them, right? But again, it's a Bob. Mali biopic trend. A lot of people, especially Jamaicans, were waiting for this to come out though. I, I can't even begin to imagine how they feel, you know, seeing this film. Like it's not it's I, I, I don't think they'll be insulted when they see it. But yeah, I imagine a majority of them, I actually know a few of them, yeah, will be very, very disappointed by it. But still, if you're curious, go see it. But if you don't think it's worth the risk, like a certain movie, Madam Web, <coughs> um, yeah, right. wait till it come out digitally and you know, watch a show and make your own opinion of it, right? Right, it's no problem. Mine, so, you know, I'm not saying don't go and see it, but I would say if you really want to see it theatrically or if you plan to see it at all, yeah, just go in with your expectations very, 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 very low. That's, that's all. Right, no problem. I'll, I'll give it, I'll, I'll make the effort to see it this week, but yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. On, on, on sure, no problem. I have yeah. a feeling you might, you might rip it apart way more, but trust me, there, there's good in it. There's really right. good in it. Don't get me wrong. There's good in it, right? So don't 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 go in with a with a with a with a Molotov co- cocktail going to throw it at the screen and put the show. Like don't do that, right? <laughs> you know. So yeah. Uh, but still, again, if you want to see it, see it. But if you want to wait till it come out online, 
yeah, yeah, we thought we thought there's a couple of online. Yeah. 